Uh, thank you very much for being here. My name is Matt Balzarini. I'm the President of uh, Board of Education for the Lambertsville Unified School District. This is awesome. Great turnout. I appreciate everyone being here tonight for a very, very important issue for us. Uh, before we start, I'd like to introduce a few people. Um, the Lambertsville Unified School District Governing Board. First off, our clerk, uh, Mikhail Lagara. Please stand. Uh, Benjamin Merrick and David Palmer. I'm here tonight uh, speaking on behalf of the board uh, because of the Brown Act, and this is not a school board meeting. Um, they're here, they're in the audience, they're available after the meeting to talk to you, but I, uh, as part of my duties, I'm here to, to work with Dale. Um, I'd also like to uh, recognize the Mountain House Community Service District Board of Directors, uh, President Bernie Stingle. <laughs> Vice President Jim Lamb. <laughs> Director Mr. Lesmer. Uh, Director Jazz Singh. Uh, ML Gordon, the general manager for the CSD. And I know there's a lot of the CSD staff that are here. Thank you very much for being here as well. Um, I know we also have a couple of uh, prior board members that are here that have worked very hard on this issue. Uh, James Fermoto. And the cool con is in the back. Okay, I'd also uh, quickly like to recognize, I know there's a, a lot of the Lambert uh, Unified School District uh, administrators and staff that are here tonight. Thank you for being here. Uh, what we're here to talk about tonight is a very complex issue. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. School finance is not easy. Um, but Mr. Hanson and I are going to do the best that we can to try and break this down for you to understand. Uh, we're not going to make you experts by any means. Like I said, very complicated. I want to show you where we're at today. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Hanson. Thank you for showing up tonight. I believe this is the single largest uh, uh, project in the Mountain House community. And I obviously have a passion for it. You'll hear that throughout the presentation tonight, uh, that uh, this, is, this is really, really important to put together a K 12 education program and when I was hired I was committed to doing that and we're, we're really close to, to making that commitment come true for this community and our students. I need to give you a little bit of a history lesson here and I'm going to try to go through real fast of how we got to this point tonight. Look at that high tech. Um, in 2007-2008 it was determined uh, that Tracy Unified was not going to build a high school out here. Tracy was servicing the high school students and Shea Holmes had been negotiating, uh, Mountain House Shea Holmes uh, had been negotiating with Tracy Unified and that negotiation broke. And so then in 2008 and 2009, we had a partnership formed with our developer, which is exactly the way a community should happen. Our partnership uh, dealt with, first of all, unifying the school district, which means the elementary district could serve nine through 12 students. We did that. We, uh, uh, went before four governing elected bodies. We went through the Lambertsville Elementary School District at the time, Tracy Unified School District at the time, and that was tough negotiations. They weren't pleased, but I think we convinced them. <clears throat> then we went to the San Joaquin County Board of Education, and then we had to go to the California Department of Education. These were all agencies that had to approve unification before we could move forward. Uh, but at every meeting, we had one hurdle. And, and the school district couldn't answer this question. The hurdle was how to finance the construction of Mountain House High School. And we could not answer that question. They said, we're not moving any further along. You're not going to move to the next step unless you answer it. So in 2008, 2009, Shea uh, Mountain House presented a plan to fund the high school, including addressing the shortfall that we were up against, which is referred to as Exhibit E. This is really significant. This was what we presented 
to these bodies to move forward. Based on construction funding plan, unification was approved at all levels. At that point, we came back to the voters of Mountain House and we approved the unification June 2010 uh, by over 80% of the electorate out here uh, on July 1, 2011. 2010 through 2011, with uh, uh, unification, uh, a, a team was formed. We needed to start right away designing the high school. On that team was the developer. Uh, every step of the way, the design of these plans, the design of what you've seen up here has been with the developer. We hired an architect, Nichols, Melbourne, and Rosetto. We formed an education specification committee. That means, what is this school going to look like? And we had a community workshop. I don't know if anyone was here with Cinco de Mayo. We had over 100 residents there giving us their opinion of what the school should look like and what kind of a curriculum we want in our school. Next step was to do our due diligence on the cost of construction. So we even formed a visitation team. We went to four high schools in Northern California to visit and see how they put them together in the last couple years. These are four new high schools open in the last few years. So we reviewed pricing guidelines for, for these high schools. The first one was American Canyon High School. It was built for 2,000 students. That's exactly what we're building for. American Canyon was built for $152 million. The next high school we went to was Christopher High School. Uh, and, and that's a phased in high school. They have finished most of the school. They have one more wing of classrooms. At this point today, it's $122 million for 2,000 students. Uh, Gregorio is uh, Gregorio High School, you may be familiar with, is down in Modesto. Uh, and that school is for 2,000 students. Also, it was $128 million. So we're trying to get as much knowledge as possible to come back and say, hey, this is what we can afford. This is the scope of the high school we can build. And also design. Uh, I, I know there's been some questions out there about why didn't we build it for the same price at Kimball. Kimball was built for $80 million total package. Kimball is a high school with more acreage. We only have 46 acres, which is the minimum amount of acreage for a high school for 2,000 students by the state standards. Kimball has more property than that. Kimball is a uh, cookie cutter high school, they call it. It's been built four times. They were able to drop Kimball right on that property, not make any adjustment, and it's already a Department of State Architect approved school. So those restrictions that are on us out here wouldn't have applied for this design. And Kimball was built at a perfect time when the construction was at the lowest amount. And so we're not able, we would never be able to build 2,000 student high school for that amount, but I wanted to address why there's a difference there. Uh, constructing a school, uh, designing a high school uh, with the architect, uh, we had to submit the plans to the California Department of Education. They literally come out here and walk the property before they approve it with us. Uh, then we uh, also have to go through the Department of, uh, uh, of State Architect, where our plan should be coming out next week. That's a six-month process. And we've also submitted uh, 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 plans to the Office of Public School Construction, and that's the financing mechanism for a school. So uh, we, we've done preliminary reviews, and the Office of Public School Construction says that we qualify for matching funds, not matching funds, but for uh, construction funds, of about $32 million. So current status is we're, we're, we've been cleared by the California Department of Education. We're waiting next week for DSA approval, and then we've submitted tentative plans to get a pricing on what the state will contribute for this project. Construction costs of Mountain House High School. 2008, in their documents presented to these committees, Shea Holmes says the high school will cost about $103 million, which was a pretty good estimate at the time. Our estimate of 2014, building this high school, is $110 million. You can do the math from 2008 to 2014 to increase costs. We think we're right on budget and right on time. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you submit to these agencies, they charge you. We have a $450,000 uh, submittal check that we have to send with these applications. So this is, this is not a just throw it in there and see what you can do. This is a serious process, and that, that is part of the fees that we'll be paying. So we, we've been working together. We, we thought we had it together. There's people in the audience who've been working with the team. I see Carolyn Davila there. She was on the visitation team, the inspects. We have our community. We have our board. 
We have everybody's working together. And then November 2011, we were informed there's a little bit of problem funding the shortfall. And a little bit of a problem? <laughs> That's not what you want to hear when you're this close. And, and so uh, uh, we have been in negotiations since then with Shea Mountain House and trying to resolve this, this, this situation and uh, the funding dispute and, and negotiation meetings have been held uh, in Los Angeles with reps down there that we've been up and down the state trying to solve this problem. Uh, why now? Why not wait? Why not wait when the economy gets better? The community master plan calls for a high school to open when we reach 650 students. Currently we have 600 high school students in our district. In 2014 we're estimating 750 students. I think we're right on schedule with what the community's asked for and what we've signed up for. It takes 24 months to build a school to open, and we're on a five-year clock. I talked about unification. The California Department of Education has put us on a five-year clock. We've already spent one year planning and getting organized unification. We have four years left to house uh, nine through 12th graders. Our unification could fall apart. They could actually take the district back to the state of California. We're also in an agreement with Tracy Unified School District because they had to release us with an agreement to move forward with unification. Currently, Tracy is charging our district six, over $600,000 for transportation and services for our special needs students. We want to get off this bill as fast as possible so those funds stay in our community and our high school. Uh, funding construction, approximately the total cost I've talked about is $110 million. Uh, construction of Mountain House High School uh, has a phasing plan. This plan is part of that Exhibit E where the funding shortfall was met by the developer. Uh, they've insisted on a phasing plan. My opinion is I'd rather build a high school and just shut down a wing or two and wait with the prices we have right now. Building it in a phasing plan will increase the cost of the high school 20 to $30 million if you do an escalation rate. We've had our contractor do that. Um, so anyway, the first phase of the starter high school uh, is uh, that picture. That building on the right there, I know it's a little small, the main building right there is administration, science, and classrooms. The other to the lower left is uh, the cafeteria and the to the back of the plans there is the gymnasium. That would give us enough classrooms to house, freshman sophomores that we're going to start with, and while that is being completed, we're hoping to start phase two when the state money comes in. So phase two and three are more classrooms, vocational education, the library, and the athletic fields. And that's when the uh, state money comes in, and we're projecting the state money will come in a year from this August. So we're just going to keep rolling, so it's going to be almost continuous construction for three years. <coughs> and then the last phase, uh, stadium, pool, and theater, uh, funding to, to be determined. Uh, we're running short of that on our current calculations right now, uh, but give me a chance to work on it. I think we'll be able to find the funding to complete the whole project. Uh, so anyway, that's a picture of the whole high school. Uh, there's a picture in the back, a larger size picture, if you exit here or when you came in, you took a look at. Uh, it's a beautiful facility. If people are wondering where it's at, uh, mascots right below, below us here, and it's between uh, the extension of Tradition and Central. And that's where the high school is, right over by the fire station. Matter of fact, the fire station is right behind the stadium. We figured we'd put the stadium there so we can have the paramedics for football games. <laughs> First lap tonight. <laughs> um, Current negotiations, uh, numerous meetings, all the stakeholders uh, have uh, uh, been at the table. Uh, it, it's been complicated. Uh, this agreement started with Trimark and Tracy Unified. Trimark to Shea Homes, Tracy Unified to Lambertsville Unified School District. So we have a mitigation agreement that was put, back, put together in uh, 1998 that has changed hands and that's made negotiations complicated. Uh, they're ongoing. Uh, we're working really hard to partner with the developer. And at 5.30 tonight, 5.30, just before we went into a closed session, uh, we got an assurance from the uh, uh, developer and a tentative agreement, literally at 5.30 tonight, that they will fund the guaranteed shortfall that they committed to back in 2008.
know, I know Mr. Balzarini is going to speak to this also, but personally, your participation, your encouragement, and your desire to have an education in this community, a K-12 education, has inspired us, and I think it's also motivated the other parties of the table that we've been in negotiation with. Thank you. Four years ago, I was sitting on the uh, elementary board, and we interviewed Mr. Hansen. And when we hired him, we assured him that he wouldn't be bored. <laughs> well, uh, the board would like to convey uh, how proud we are of this community. Uh, a week ago, we were in a completely different position. When we announced the community meeting, um, things were looking grim. And following the support of the community, the, uh, the outpour of uh, help that's been offered, I, the message has been received loud and clear from us, and I also believe from the developer. Um, I do have to acknowledge the work that Mr. Hansen's put into this. He's been working day and night. I've been getting phone calls at 10 o'clock at night and then 6 o'clock the next morning from Mr. Hansen after talking to developers, talking to our legal team, and uh, this hasn't been easy, but it's, uh, it, it's great news for us. Uh, although this is not done, it's looking good. We know this is a lot of information. It's a lot of information real quick. Uh, we've been working on this for the last week, trying to, to give enough information and, and fill in the holes, but not too much where you, your head's spinning. So we want to open this up for questions and answers. And we have a microphone here. If anybody would like to come up and ask any questions that we can answer, you're more than welcome to do so. And uh, Mr. Fuller, I'd like to speak. I know not all of us board members are supposed to speak, so don't anybody else get up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to, to reconvey to you um, as a community that I know you're here, and it sounds like um, why did we come tonight? Because there's such good news. The reason why there's good news tonight, I believe, as a board member and as a community member, is because of you, because you were willing to be here tonight and the fact that you care so much about education in this community. If you didn't care, and I, I believe that in the negotiations that it was a key point that we were able to use, that as a community, you know that education is number one for your kids. And we, as a board, all together were able to convey the message to the people we were negotiating with that, that this was important for the community and that we weren't going to let it go. So I appreciate all of you being here tonight. While it's great news that we've moved forward in our uh, negotiations, it's because you're here. So thank you. regardless of what happens for the second and third phase. Absolutely. Perfect. It, it guarantees that. <laughs> One person I failed to introduce, because there's a lot of people involved, but uh, Gary Rawls is here from Turner Construction, our contractor. And uh, uh, we, we have a phase one contract that's going to be brought to the, the board on July 6th next week. And uh, for approval and moving. So you're going to see dirt moving on that in July on that property right there. And so we're moving forward. We're going to go home. My question is a statement. I just want to give thanks to Dale in particular because I know you've been busting on this to get this to happen. I think this is critically important for our community that this be successful and I think we're on the right track. And I want to certainly thank Matt and the other board members who I know you guys have built tremendous amount of time and energy into making this happen. And, and frankly, I want to thank, even though I had to nudge him to the table, I want to thank Shay Mountainhouse for, for coming through in the end and, and funding what, what I believe was her obligation to fund in the first place. So thanks everybody for your hard work. And I'm, glad, I'm glad we'll be able to hear it from my house. I'll be able to hear the football games you know, once, <laughs> once that phase happens. But we, we are looking for a partnership. We're looking to move on, not to go back. And, and, and that's critical in a growing community that, that the, 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 all the team, the community service district, the school board, and, and, and the developer are on the same page moving 
for. We can accomplish a lot right now. We really can. And so we're looking for the future. Any further questions? Sure. So it sounds like the, the funding shortfall has been remedied as of tonight. That's great. Um, what else should we be worried about now? <coughs> Uh, until the money's in the bank, <laughs> which I'm sure will happen in July, uh, we, we are working with our contractor to drill down the best school facilities for the best price right now. And we're hoping the bids from the subcontractors come in and we can build more of the school. I showed the last phase of the stadium and the pool. It would be great if we can get this down to a pricing in that last phase that we can get to complete high school. And so I'm not going to worry about that. I think we're going to have a wonderful facility. Uh, but the, the timing is, is a lot of pressure on the district to, to get it up and going. And there hasn't been a unification in 20 years where they started without a high school already in existence in the district. So we're kind of setting the bar for a lot of state agencies to look at right now. Well, go ahead. So phase one should be finished in 14? Right, we're going to open up. It should be done. Hopefully, the schedule right now is July because we want we have to hire staff, principals, teachers, the whole thing, be ready, and we want them working in that facility before we open school in August of 14. And then, <laughs> and if the state funding comes in, when it should next August, we're rolling into phase two at the same time. We have the contractor out there, we have the subcontractors out there, and we think we'll save money by doing that. Okay, state funding is guaranteed, but they don't always come forth with it. So we're going to be guaranteed under the state funding program, but when it comes, that keeps me up at night. But we would like to roll it all in and have that done the next year after. Yes. I'm sure we have qualified people in Mountain House who would like to have some jobs at the high school. Where will these jobs be posted? Oh, teaching positions. Teaching or, positions, well, staff. We'll post all the teaching positions a year in advance. We're going to hire a principal and an assistant and hopefully a counselor to uh, start prepping a, a year in advance. And the teaching positions will be posted. We, we send that out through a, a, a posting service for, for those types of things. Okay, what service is that so people can monitor and look for it? Head join. Head join. Head join. Head join is the service that we use for that. Thank you. Well, uh, Matt and I are, are always available. Uh, you want to email us, uh, you can find it. Uh, we're going to, uh, uh, you want to mention about the web page? All the information, we're putting everything on our website. As far as you're asking about jobs, there's a link to EdJoin on our website. Um, and any new information, we're supposed to be hearing back from the developer next week. Whatever we hear, we'll make sure it's on the website so you can check there for the most current information. And again, our email addresses are up there. Feel free. Um, that's it. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.